I'ma snuggle you by Sugar Pinky VA. I'ma snuggle you! Twilight screeched, suddenly bursting through the doors of Carousel Boutique, purple streaks flying behind her. Startled, Rarity looked up from her dressmaking, almost stabbing herself in the hoof with a sewing needle. Huh? What about moi? Rarity asked, only hearing the last part of Twilight's shriek. The white mare's confusion quickly faded away to horror when she saw the state Twilight was in. Goodness, darling! Whatever happened to your coiffure? She galloped over to Twilight, who was visibly shaking, and tried smoothing down the frizzy ends of her violet-striped mane. There, there! Rarity cooed, brushing Twilight's hair with brilliant blue magic. I'm sure we can fix your mane and whatever is bothering you, but I first need to know. Rarity abruptly cut off, looking down. Twilight was affectionately nuzzling the other unicorn against her fuzzy neck, purring like Opal after a warm bowl of milk. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rarity stammered, feeling her cheeks heat up. The purple mare continued snuggling Rarity, stroking up and down with her head. Admittingly, it wasn't altogether unpleasant feeling. D -d darling what an equestria are you doing? Twilight stopped, blinking her dark, pretty eyes. I'm snuggling you! She replied innocently, her tiny muzzle squished in disbelief. I told you when I came in, Rarity! Remember, I'm a snuggle you! She yelled again, eyes glazing as she dived back into Rarity's neck. What? The fashionista squirmed as Twilight nosed her sensitive fur. But what? Why? She asked, trying to comprehend exactly what was happening. This didn't make any sense, especially for Twilight. If this had been Pinky, on the other hoof, it might have been excusable and just passed off as Pinky being Pinky. But Twilight? Absolutely ridiculous. Twilight was Twilight just as much as Pinky was Pinky. A smart, beautiful, sophisticated, beautiful, completely logical mare. What would cause Twilight to change and randomly start cuddling her? Not that she was asking her to stop. Why? Twilight repeated, retreating her head from Rarity. Why? Because snuggling! It's very simple! I'd expect you, out of all ponies, to understand this Rarity! Before Rarity could answer back, the snuggling, crazing mare tackled Rarity to the soft, carpeted floor, her attack increasing in bookish cuteness. Laying her back, they were both pushed up against the tall, wooden table, a bouquet of flowers arranged in a glass vase balanced on top. Goodness, I hope it doesn't fall, Rarity thought, before finding herself laughing. The purple unicorn was sneezing. She was trying so hard. But trying hard, so hard to what? Rarity wondered. Snuggle? Twilight sneezed again and covered her mouth in Rarity's neck. Ooh. Rarity screeched, sitting up. Darling, what was that? Twilight wasn't listening and attempted to attack the fashionista once again. She squirmed over Rarity's shoulder, but Rarity quickly blocked her. Enough! Rarity bellowed, frightening Twilight. I will only let you do this if you apologize for sneezing on my gorgeous coat immediately. I'm sorry. Twilight didn't seem sorry. Sorry for what? Sorry for sneezing on your gorgeous coat. Oh well, apologies accept- Twilight jumped off of Rarity's stomach, comfortably settling while she kneaded like a cat. Apparently, conversations didn't last very long with this version of Twilight. Speaking of which, Rarity cleared her throat, hoping to catch Twilight's attention. Maybe she'd be willing to speak with her while they were snuggling. Twilight, may I ask what brought on this behavior? The purring from Twycat puttered out, and she seemed to be considering Rarity's question. Well, I think... She began... I think it started with a potion. A potion? Yes, a potion, and I drank it. I figured as much, darling. Twilight frowned, but her eyes stayed happy. Yes, well, I did, and that's it. That's it, darling. Rarity raised an eyebrow, blowing strands of Twilight's mane out of her eyes. Without realizing it, Rarity's hoofs were absently wrapped tightly around Twilight's barrel, hugging. 
Yeah. Toilette nodded. I was trying to make a love slash honesty potion, but I messed it up. And then Spike accidentally added it to my morning coffee. Shh. <laughs> Spike really needs to start paying more attention. I swear he's so ungrateful for the cat food I feed him. And it's even wet. Rarity decided to ignore that last comment about Spike's diet. But somewhere in the back of her head, she decided to sneak him marshmallows at night from then forward. Wait, why a love potion, Twilight? Who were you trying to woo? Her face lit up. Oh, was it my... You! Twilight grinned, fluttering her lashes. Uh, what? Rarity coughed, sputtering. She stared at Twilight in shock for a moment. Mm-hmm, said Twilight, hiccuping in excitement. I love you! Rarity smiled, her stomach bursting into fluttershy butterflies. Who cared if it was just a spell making Twilight say these things? It was still true, right? Or was it a dream? Did Twilight, cute, amazing, smart, beautiful, clever Twilight really like her? The one pony she had a crush on ever since meeting? I... I... Twilight cut the white unicorn stuttering off with a swift kiss. Well, it was more like a messy headbutt, but it worked just fine for Rarity anyway. But then Twilight began giggling madly halfway through, and that made Rarity start to laugh. Rarity pulled back, her beaming face hopeful. Do you really mean that, darling? You actually love me? Not just a potion? Oh, Rarity! Twilight snorted, nuzzling her mare friend again. There was no potion! We here at Pony and Wolf Productions thank these amazing patrons of ours for their monthly support, without which all of this would not be possible. We sincerely appreciate it and every dollar helps, is needed, and will be used to keep us going to produce audiobooks for your continued enjoyment. It is, now more than ever, important that you support your favorite creators if possible, due to YouTube changing in a way, that is not very friendly to content creators especially small content creators, like us. In recent months, the names you see on screen have enabled Midnight and Visual Pony to keep going and only having to sell off part of their belongings to not end up on the street. As an incentive for everyone, Visual Pony has broken a vow and has promised to read and record Fallout E. Kestria, Murky No. 7, should the monthly support reach $1,500. To be clear, this is the absolute minimum amount needed to keep the apartment and all bills paid without starving, while a production of this size is ongoing. The estimated time for this production would be three to four years, but people already said that Project Horizons was impossible to do, right? And now look who did it, so with Pony and Wolf, you know we can finish the job. For further information on how to support us, please have a look at the description of this video as there are also other ways, like our merch store. Sincerely and forever yours. Your Pony and Wolf Team